way we consume and share news today, it is larger rooted in social media outlets, a reason why it's crucial to look at what's being discussed online. From the hottest issues to trends for our daily social media minute, we're joined by Yerka in the studio. Good morning. Good morning. So seasonally dressed. <laughs> Warm, I, I guess cozy. so. Yeah. Sweater weather. Sweater. Mm-hmm. Sweater. Sweater weather. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the Asian Games has wrapped and we're celebrating some of the biggest heroes of the Asian Games, namely gold medalists. Yeah, that's uh, right. Champions in all different events. And An Seong is a name that we should be paying attention to because she clearly marches to beat of her own drums. Yep. Most athletes would say yes to more exposure. <laughs> that's right. And she's saying no. <laughs> no thanks. Yeah. Um, so An Seong, she, she won two gold med- medals mm. at the, the Asian Asian Games won in the singles event and won in the the group, mm-hmm. the team event. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she got a lot of praise during the Asian Games because she nabbed that uh, coveted gold medal despite her knee injury. We could see that she was in, clearly in a lot of pain yeah, yeah. Uh, during the match, but uh, you know, she she overcame that and she won. And she's once again earning praise from fans and the public uh, for what she, well, for her latest decisions, basically. <laughs> and this is her latest decision. <laughs> yeah, so she took to Instagram last week and uh, she shared the news that uh, ever since she got back from the Asian Games, uh, she had received a number of offers, Mm. TV appearances, interviews, Mm. uh, endorsements, Mm, mm. um, but she said she declined them all. (sighs) She said no to all of them. And uh, in her post, she said that right now, her number one priority is to fully recover from her knee injury and take some much needed rest. Okay, so she went on to sort of explain Mm. why she doesn't want the hefty endorsement deals and exposure and you can't blame any athlete for wanting to kind of Mm -hmm. ride that high it's expected of your career and perhaps even deserving but it does look like she emphasized Mm -hmm. her commitment to her role as an athlete rather than pursuing non-sport related commitment so essentially she's saying i'm not a celebrity yeah that's exactly what she said. Uh, you know, uh, a couple of gold medals doesn't make me special, doesn't make me a celebrity. So this is what she said. I am just an ordinary athlete yesterday, tomorrow, and today. I prioritize my role in the gym over outside commitments. Winning a medal doesn't make me f- special. I'm just one of the countless athletes who persistently work toward their goals every single day. And, uh, you know, she said this, but she also remembered to express her gratitude to mm-hmm. everyone who mm-hmm. has been standing beside her. Uh, she acknowledged that she, has been, she hasn't been able to respond to all the love and support she's been receiving. Mm-hmm. And uh, she basically asked her fans to bear with her for a little while Mm. longer so she can gain back her strength and, uh, you know, deliver more strong performances on the court moving forward. Mm. And as of Sunday, this post uh, received 45,000 likes and more than a thousand comments. And you can only imagine why it is refreshing for anyone with this much star power and potential to sign many lucrative deals saying, no things, I'm not a celebrity, Mm. I'm just an ordinary athlete mind you i don't think you're just an ordinary athlete no she's not <laughs> she's really not she's by every measurable standard mm. uh, and, uh, and, and a star yeah you right? know everyone's saying you know she's so young she's 21 years old okay. and uh the, the people are basically saying you know what her her maturity is on a different level why beyond her, her years yeah and her mental focus is really admirable mm. now social media users left so many messages and words of encouragement uh, on her Instagram, you know, saying things like her play is strong, but her mindset is even stronger. And, uh, you know, people encouraged her, keep pushing forward towards your goals. Mm -hmm. Now, um, like I said, she won two gold medals at the Asian Games and uh, her women's singles gold medal Mm -hmm. marked only the second gold in Korean history uh, for the women's event and first in 29 years since the 19th 1994 Hiroshima Games. Okay, so a big win for her. And again, that's despite her knee injury and clearly her being seen powering through some of the more painful moments. She was praised for demonstrating tremendous fighting spirit and ultimately (laughs) secure that gold medal. That's right. Uh, Since she got back, she's been diagnosed with a torn tendon (gasps) near her knee very painful and she's currently undergoing a rehabilitation process 
um, you know, that's expected to last for weeks, basically. You know, based on our interview, based on the injury that she was fighting mm. through, it tells a whole lot about this athlete. Well, and I just only look forward to what comes next that's for right. her, her, right? Her inner strength. I really know. inspiring. Uh, 21 years yep. young, just getting started, mm-hmm. perhaps. On to our second buzzword of the day. So apparently we all want a digitally detox. <laughs> this is perhaps one of the reasons why oh, this gosh. is back in fashion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, or or maybe it's just a fashion statement. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> you know what? Um, this isn't something like new, new. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We've been talking about yeah. this for a while. Yeah. Yeah. How, you know, people simply want to detox from the digital environment, uh, all that toxicity mm. on social media like doom fake scrolling news. which yeah. I was doing just last night <laughs> and I could have went to bed at 10pm like um, a normal person by mm. doom scrolled until midnight that's, yeah. that's funny how and that works and you know what with everything that's going on in Israel and yeah. you know Palestine yeah. if, you know parents are being warned by yeah. school teachers to to you know to encourage their kids to delete social media apps from their phones because there's so much graphic image yeah so many so many graphic images just yeah. floating around mm. and you know uh, and it, it's one thing to be informed. It's another to be constantly bombarded with uncensored mm. images and graphic uh, videos yep. coming out of different parts of the Gaza That's Strip. Right. So you're right. I, I think the overexposure mm-hmm. to any any news, <laughs> it's a bit much. And the reason why we're talking about this is because flip phones <laughs> and feature flip phones are, are considered to be hip items for millennial and Gen Z consumers. So feature phones basically are mobile phones without smartphone functions. They're less sophisticated. They have smaller screens and physical buttons that you press. <laughs> <laughs> Younger listeners, are you aware that we used to have physical buttons and tiny screens? Yeah, that was the norm. <laughs> that was the norm. Now, until now, flip phones and feature phones were mainly used by older consumers. So let's try to explain this trend. Yeah. Uh, beyond digital detoxing, why is it so in? You know, uh, like I said, digital detox is one of them. Another key factor driving this trend uh, is the retro trend. Again, this is nothing new either. It's been going on for a while. Young people tend to be curious about what the older generation <laughs> used and what they considered to be hip back in the days. Uh, you know, it's something they haven't experienced and they find, uh, you know, older things refreshing and new. Go figure. I don't know what I, I'm floored by more. The idea that they think this is old yeah. or that that also implies <laughs> how old I am that, that kind of thing that's right <laughs> all right but you're right Erica you mentioned before mm-hmm. that the new tour trend is perhaps here to stay and there's a whole new generation picking up on things from the 90s and early yeah. 2000s and sort of deeming them archaic that's right <laughs> you know uh, we talked about how you know those old school digital cams were yeah. becoming popular um, you know those grainy photographs you know the Gen Z love them I don't know a part of me thinks that it, it makes all of us look better. <laughs> The grainy photographs. Yeah. Like, it doesn't require much editing because a lot is like lost in a detail. Right. And sometimes there's beauty in that too. Yeah. Right? You don't have to highlight and accentuate every detail of your face. Yeah, <laughs> so this trend is reflected in a bunch of YouTube videos ah. actually uh, that showcase, you know, YouTubers unboxing or decorating old feature phones. Oh, I would be amazed if people start bedazzling their yeah. phones like stickers no. and whatnot. Yeah, that's the thing. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Paris Hilton's all coming back. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, basically, Gen Z and millennials, they use smartphones as fashion accessories. It's a <laughs> statement, right? You know, they want to show people I'm, a, I'm different. I wonder if it would have cost anything if I kept my old phone. Uh, I wonder, does that actually play a factor? I wouldn't use... Uh, my old feature phone as my main phone, maybe as my second sub phone. That that's already exhausting. Me. I know a Having second two phone. My bad. That's already like, so who am heavy. I? Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, but it, it's actually a big selling point mm-hmm. that these uh, feature phones or flip phones are relatively more affordable. That's right, a lot more affordable. Actually, <laughs> the combined monthly installment and fees amount to around ten thousand won. Uh, a secondhand feature phone costs around one hundred thousand won so i think that's like one tenth of a brand new smartphone right yes yeah so you know there's the cost effective uh, factor there as well that uh, the younger consumers find to be appealing my young cousin started using a feature phone about a year ago Uh and i asked her how long do you think you can actually keep up Uh with it and because she's gotten that so much from all these speculative adults right she's kind of powered through a whole year with the feature phones so i applaud her maybe it's not just a fad (laughs) who knows Mm. (laughs) i'll ask her again a few months 
time. <laughs> On to our last buzzword of the day. So an unlicensed ambulance driver paid to drive at Judy's Kim Tae-woo to an event was sentenced to one year and six months in prison. Now, this yeah. has been sort of an ongoing issue, right? That's These, right. Not all ambulances mm-hmm. are, are meant to be used as ambulances, I suppose. Right. Um, so this is an ongoing legal case. A 44-year-old man... Uh, operated an ambulance without a valid driver's license and uh, provided basically transportation services mm. for singer Kim Tae-woo. Um, you know, uh, this man received uh, money from Kim Tae-woo mm. or his management agency. Anyways, this man has uh, received a sentence of one year and six months in prison along with a 2 million won fine, roughly 1,600 US dollars. Um, you know, the man is guilty of violating the Emergency Medical Services Act and driving without a valid license under the Road Traffic Act. So the incident dates back a few years. Mm-hmm. So what exactly happened? So um, the incident dates back to March 2018. Uh, the man transported Kim Tae-woo from Ilsan to an event taking place in Songdong-gu, Seoul, mm-hmm. uh, using an unlicensed ambulance. And at the time, a representative from the entertainment company Kim Tae-woo was affiliated with allegedly shared um, this man's contact information with an employee of an event management company, you know, yeah. uh, the 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 head of the entertainment company okay. basically suggested, you know, use this uh, license if you want to avoid traffic congestion. Mm. Um, so, anyways, the employee from the event management company contacted the ambulance driver mm. and arranged to transport Kim Tae Woo. Uh, he accepted three hundred thousand won, roughly mm. two hundred fifty U.S. dollars, as payment. If you just made me turn back the clock like two decades uh-huh. ago, I remember seeing more reports of such. Yes. Uh, well, illegal usage mm-hmm. of ambulances and also using quick services, right? That's right. The, the motorcycles to get celebrities from point A to point B in a timely fashion. Because it's easier to weave in and out of traffic uh, on a motorcycle. And it's not deemed a safe or no. the legal choice. Now, has legal action been taken against the executive of that entertainment company and also the other involved, the employee of the event management company? And Kim tae himself, right? Yes. yes. They've all been charged with violating the Emergency Medical Services Act. It's worth noting that the legal action uh, against Kim tae and others took the form of a sort of a simplified uh, prosecution. Uh, it allows for the imposition of fines or property confiscation without a full trial. Okay. Mm. W- what about this man who drove the ambulance? You know, he has a prior history of driving under the influence. That's why his driver's license was revoked and hence didn't have a license when he was driving the uh-huh. ambulance with okay. Kim tae in the ambulance. Oh dear. Uh, so yes, he has been additionally charged with operating an ambulance uh, without a license from August 2021 to March 2022. Now, the judge who presided over the case said the the man made repeated excuses for driving without a license uh, and, uh, you know, his drinking and driving, Mm. you know, all of this justified a severe penalty. All right. There you have it. Thank you very much, Erica, for today's update. (laughs) See you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.